All right, so I watched Batman Caped Crusader. This is the brand new Batman animated series. I want to say it's the first, or it's the it's the latest one since Beware the Batman? <laughs> what the fuck did that come out? I don't think there's been one in between them. So this is, uh, it's, been, it's been a minute since we've had a proper Batman animated series. And uh, it's also by one half of the, of the team that brought us the OG Batman animated series. Uh, Bruce Tim, Paul Dini I don't think is involved with this at all I think it's just Bruce Tim, and um it it very much feels in the vein of Batman the Animated Series uh however there are some stark differences like this is very much set in like the 1940s uh and you definitely feel it like Batman does not have like super high-tech gadgets here um you have like all the you have, the, you have that forties like sort of a dialect where it's like ah see I'm a I'm from the nineteen forties see it's the there's a Batman there see <laughs> I, I can't fucking do it um but you know you definitely feel the nineteen forties and uh I personally really dig this vibe for Batman like him not having super high tech technology and him needing to go out and do like detective work in a very grounded way is is very cool and like yeah we i had the they they also like really lean into the detective aspect of batman here uh which is super neat to see and um it feels grounded for sure however it 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 also does have fantastical elements like you know there is magic in this world, this guy here, he, there, there's like an episode where Batman has to deal with like a ghost character, and he goes to like this like mystic guy. I don't, I don't know if this guy's ever in the comics or anything, but he has to go see this guy, and it's it's very much alluded that there is a world of mysticism out there in this world. There's even some like sci-fi elements where like some of the villains do definitely have like science-based sort of powers and whatnot. Um, and, and, and yeah, so it's like, it is grounded, but it's also, it's not afraid to be like, yeah, there's also certain fantastical elements to the world. Um, it's, all, it's actually kind of interesting because Matt Reeves is also an executive producer on this series. So I wonder if Matt Reeves is going to be open to maybe going a bit farther the way that this does in like potential Batman sequels. Because I know there are a lot of people that are like, like they really want to see a two, like a clay face. And I'm like, I don't know that Matt Reeves is ever going to give us the clay face that you want. <laughs> you know what I mean? But maybe he will because he's a, he, he was an executive producer on the series. Um, and out, honestly, in a lot of ways, this really does feel like the Robert Pattinson Batman. Like, this feels like the Robert Pattinson Batman that we're probably going to get in the Batman Part 2. Because... Like, this Batman is very much like a little gremlin who, where, like, Batman is who the character is, and then Bruce Wayne that you see here is the, who's, like, the womanizer, who's the very, like, flamboyant um, philanthropist. That's the mask that he puts on to hide his identity. And it's honestly really cool, because, like, <laughs> there's, like, this moment in the first episode where he's going to this party, uh, and he's very much like, I'm Batman. And he's talking to Alfred. And then, like, the second he steps into the party, he puts on this smile. And it's kind of creepy. <laughs> it's, it's very, It, it kind of feels like American Psycho-ish. And it's like... <laughs> and it's like, yeah, like, it, like the, the, this Batman feels very much in the vein of Robert Pattinson's Batman. And you can kind of see where... And again, with Matt Reeves working on it, I feel like you can... This is kind of where Robert Pattinson's Batman is going to go. And I... I do think that's very interesting. So, so yeah, I really love this interpretation of Batman. But we also have a bunch of, like, side characters as well. Like, we have Barbara Gordon and Jim Gordon. Um, they both play very prominent roles in the show. Uh, Barbara's a lawyer in this. I don't know if she's ever been a lawyer in any other um, iterations of the character. Uh, they are also black. So, you know, if, uh, if, if that bothers you, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, um, it it does play into the story, right? Like they are black in the 1940s, and Jim Gordon, he's you know trying to, he's dealing with a lot in uh, being the police commissioner in the 1940s. 
Uh, like, they don't shy away from, like, racism and stuff. It's not, like, an overt thing where they're, like, beating you over the head with it. But it definitely, I, I actually do feel like it adds to, like, Batman or Gordon having, trying to root out the corruption of the GCPD while also having to deal with, like, not-so-subtle racist, like, overtones and stuff. I personally think it it actually adds to the character and it kind of makes sense why you would want to make him black. Uh, but, I don't know. Pe- people, people are going to be mad <laughs> um renee montoya is also like a big part of the show I, I i really like her as well she's like she's like one of the good cops that's very that's working with gordon and they're you know they're, they're working together a lot um you have like lucius fox who again is a lawyer in this i can't remember i don't think he's a, he's ever is he traditionally a lawyer i'm trying i'm actually trying to remember because i mostly know him from like the from the the nolan batman movies and he was more of a businessman. I don't know. Whatever. He's he's Bruce Wayne's lawyer in this. Alfred's also here. He's Fat Alfred. <laughs> fat Alfred. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, um, Lucius Fox isn't in it so much. Alfred is in it way more. I really like this version of Alfred. It is very upsetting though because Batman is really mean to Alfred in this. Or at the very, or he's again he. Uh, I keep on drawing comparisons to the Matt Reeves Batman movie, but yeah, he's very much like the Robert Pattinson Batman where he's very cold to Alfred and he's not, he's not super warm and friendly. And he, in this show, he doesn't call him Alfred. He's always calling him Pennyworth. Um, now to be clear, not to spoil anything, but it, it's all part of the character's arc, right? Like it eventually, you know, goes somewhere, but it's very upsetting how mean he is to Alfred throughout the series, but uh, it's not like bad or anything. It's just like it it, it made me upset <laughs> and feel bad for Alfred. But yeah, this version, this iteration of Alfred is, is great. I, I I feel like most of, like has there ever been a bad Alfred? Like even in the worst Batman movies, right? And has there ever been an Alfred that where people have been like, oh, he sucks. I feel like Alfred is the one. Alfred is the constant of comic book media, where he's just always there, and you you always appreciate him being there. You know what I mean? Um, we also have Harvey Dent. Uh, he, you know, a lot of the villains are like villain of the week characters. Harvey Dent, is, but there are there are a few that have sort of like overarching storylines that play out throughout the season. Harvey Dent is one of those characters for sure, and. He mostly acts as a side character, but you know, this is a spoiler. It's in the trailer. He does, he does turn into two face in this, but, uh, Harvey Dent is one of the characters that for sure is like, just, it's just Harvey Dent. It's just two face. It's the story that we've seen before. Um, cause we're about to get into some of the characters that they, they, they change a bit. <laughs> and, uh, Har- Harvey Dent is for sure. Just like he's Harvey Dent at first, then he becomes two face and it's a story that we've seen before, <laughs> but uh, but it's it's done well. Like honestly, like by the end of it, especially uh, once you get done with Harvey Dent's character, I'm like, damn, that was good. <laughs> it's like, have I seen it before? Yes. Did was I like? Did I become very invested in this Harvey Dent? Yes. So uh, I'll I'll leave it at that, I guess. Um. So yeah, one of the main ones that they changed, uh, or uh, I'm just gonna run through a bunch of the villains. One of the main ones that they changed was they made Penguin into a woman. It's not like a trans woman or anything. I at least I don't think it is. It's like a she's she's, she's just a woman, um, like a biological woman. And I actually really liked this. So, what one of the other things about uh, and they they call her Oswalda. Could they have come up with a more <laughs> clever name or interesting name? Probably, but it's Oswalda. Uh, but one of the things about her is that she has kids in this and, uh, the, the two, two, the, the two guys on the left there, um, not, 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 not the black guy, (laughs) but the two, two guys on the left there, they're her children. And I don't want to spoil anything, but she, she, she like abuses them throughout the, throughout, throughout, throughout the show. And it's one of those things where. I actually do think that her being a woman and her being like an abusive mother honestly makes it more scary than if it was just Oswald, Oswald Cobblepot. Maybe this is maybe this is sexist of me to say, but like seeing a mother 
uh, abusing her children is just like worse to me. Or no, it's not. It's not worse, but it's like it it unsettles me more than seeing like a father abuse their children. Just because I don't know. I just feel like a mother, like a mother not loving her children, is just like such this. It's such a horrific concept to me, and it's just a, it's such a scary concept to me, and it just unsettles me more than like if than like a dad not loving their kids, just because a a mother's love is supposed to and a father's love too, but it just it just, it just feels different. Like a mother's love really should be this like unconditional thing, um, and seeing the like seeing the way that Oswaldo treats her kids is genuinely unsettling, and honestly, I think makes her makes her really scary. Um, but other than that, like, I, I also just think that, yeah, there are a lot of like, you know, traditional penguin elements where she's, she, she owns like the iceberg lounge and whatnot. So she is in large part the penguin, but just a woman, but what they do with it, I, I, I do think it, it's interesting. And I don't, I don't think it's just like, you know, people are going to be like woke or like DEI agenda. They're checking boxes. Ah, like people are going to say all those things. I really honestly don't think that's necessarily the case here. And even if it is, they do it in a, in a good way. So like who, who gives a shit? <laughs> I don't know. So that's my perspective at least. Um, we also see Clayface in this again. He's it's, it's interesting, right? So I think that this version of Clayface is, I think it's supposed to be more consistent with like one of the more, um, one of the earlier versions of Clayface, because I don't think that Clayface was always like a giant clay monster, the way that he's portrayed in like modern media. Um, this Clayface is it. I guess I won't spoil it, but he's definitely not the clay monster. But it does play into the more the more of like the science fiction aspects of this, where it's more grounded than what we saw in like the animated series. But it's still also not completely realistic. It's not. It's not like uh, obsessed with being grounded in realism. Like Clayface, definitely he he does change his appearance and stuff like that. And it's done in a way that is honestly a little more like scarier and more like grotesque. I would argue than than like the clay monster version of Clayface. But I I do like it. You know, it it, it actually feels very much like the Phantom of the Opera in a lot of ways. Um, the, the way that his story plays out and, uh, and I really liked it personally. Um, we also get Catwoman. Catwoman is definitely a character that is, uh, very, she's very much just traditional Catwoman. <laughs> I mean, this is, she just is Selena Kyle. She is running around doing her thing. Um, they gave her like more of an explicit backstory in this that I thought was interesting. I don't actually know, like if. I don't know if that is necessary. I wonder if actually her back, the way that her backstory works, is that different from how she's usually portrayed or what her, what her origin story usually is? I guess it might be actually, it's definitely different from like what we got in like a, in like the Batman, right? Where I guess what, I guess what I'll say is I guess it, I feel like Catwoman in the Batman, at least she was like a, a poor person or she, yeah, she was like poor. And so she, in, in Cape Crusader, this version of Catwoman is like an aristocrat kind of, and I I won't go into it too much more than that, but it, I, is she, is, is Catwoman traditionally like kind of a poor person that steals because she like has to or whatever, or is she usually like an aristocrat? I don't actually know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really sure, but this version of Catwoman is still good. And in, you know, in a lot of ways, it's, it's very traditional. Um, the, uh, another major one that they, that, that they very much changed, uh, Harley Quinn. So, uh, she's Harley and Quinzel and she does, we, we do see her as Harley Quinn. However, none of this, uh, her change into Harley Quinn is not impacted by the Joker, right? She, she does it on her own volition. And this is another one where it's like, yes, it's very different from what we see in like in in the animated series where she actually where the character actually originated. But I didn't mind the change because what they do with her is very interesting. I want to I don't again I don't want to spoil it, but it's very much like her 
her villainness her villainousness is like it it's very much like a uh attached to her being a psychologist and the things that she does the reasons why she does them um is a, is attached to her being a psychologist and i really like that cuz when you look at uh, the original harley quinn um it's one of those things where you forget that she was a psychiatrist <laughs> it's like Sometimes she'll like say something that kind of reminds you and makes you go, oh yeah, yeah, she was a psychiatrist, right? Um, but it's not really, it doesn't really have anything to do with her villain persona or just her like infatuation with the Joker. Um, so I kind of appreciated what they do with her, and I and and yeah, I think she's also very scary in her own way, um, and, and I really dug it. Uh, but and I guess what what I'll say about the show overall is that. If you listen, if you're one of these people, right, where you're just like, uh, it's be the exact same as the thing that I watched before. I just want to watch the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, if that's you, you're probably gonna hate the show because, as I as I've shown here, they do a lot of switch or switching or switching things around. They are changing origin stories. They're changing races. They're changing genders. Um, and if you're gonna if if you're somebody that's just gonna like. If you're not into that, then you're not going to be into this. Um, but if you're somebody like me that doesn't really care too much about it, uh, about if like new adaptations of things change stuff around, and if you're like me and the only thing that you really care about at the end of the day if is if the thing is good, then I think there's going to be a lot to like here. I, I think uh, I I personally really enjoyed the show. Uh, by the way, there's a there's a bunch more villains than what I talked about today, but these are just like the really popular, well known villains. But there's a bunch of there 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 are a bunch of villains in in this show that I didn't even really recognize, like I, that that are really new and that are super interesting. Um, and, and I will say the other thing about the show is that 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 I haven't mentioned so far is that the show gets dark. It it's not like TVMA or anything like that, but it's also like like you you know when you watch like old cartoons, superhero cartoons and like you you kind of feel like they're trying to go you, or you like you you feel like they they want like the a villain to like flat out mur- like kill somebody or you like there's like a certain scene where you feel like they kind of want to get darker but they kind of have to pull back because it's a kids show. Th- this show never pulls anything back. You know, this show never like pulls any of its punches. It doesn't go out of its way, you know, to be like brutal or grotesque or anything like that. But it never stops itself from go from doing what it needs to do, and that that that's also another really cool really cool aspect of the show. Um, but yeah, like yeah, I I think that if if you just want a good Batman show, this is this is definitely that. If you if you're somebody that like, even though this is like the eight hundred seventy fifth thousandth millionth uh, iteration of Batman, <laughs> if you're really gonna be like super precious about like fucking the Batman mythos and be like it needs to be the same thing that I've seen a million times, then you might not enjoy it. So let me know what you think. Have you seen the show? Uh, what do you think about it? Have you not seen it? then I don't know, go watch it. Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.